Welcome to Ear Level English Language. I'm Yvonne Norden, one of the assistant head teachers and one of the team of staff that teaches Ear Level English Language at Coldview School. We are a really successful course. Lots of our students have done really well and we're really proud of their achievements over a number of years. Whilst you'll be familiar with the English language course from your GCSE, the A level in English language is really quite different. So I really hope in this video to give you a taste of the vast um, range of topics and ideas that you get to explore and the different skills that you'll develop as part of the A level in English language. To begin with, I'd just like to give you a little overview of the content of the course, again, so that you can see the vast range of topics um, that you'll have the opportunity to explore and study. This is a linear A level, meaning that over the course of the two years, you will work towards the full A level in English language. There are two um, units that are assessed by exams. Each of those units counts for 40 percent and then there is 20 percent non-exam assessment. The first unit is called Language, the Individual and Society and is very much about language and how it's being used um, by people. So looking at how um, texts are used to create meaning and representations so of the, the subjects, the people, the, the places, the issues that texts are about, how language is used within those texts to create those representations um, of those individuals, those people, those issues. Um, we also study, and this is a, a, a lot of people's favourite part of the course, we, we study children's language development from birth through to the age of 11. Um, and I think because people obviously have that experience of acquiring language, um, people find it really fascinating. Um, and as well as studying the development of spoken language, we also study um, early literacy. So um, how, how children learn to read and how they learn to write and how that's different to how they learn to speak. Um, and those early sounds, those early words, and then those early structures and exploring lots of theories and ideas about how that language develops um, for a child. The second unit is called Language Diversity and Change. And again, this is a really fascinating topic with lots of different um, issues that you explore. Um, so under that heading of language diversity, we would explore things like language and age, language and gender, um, whether or not your gender affects the language you use, but also how language can be used to represent genders differently. Um, we'll look at things like language and occupation, accent and dialect, ethnicity, um, language and sexuality, huge range of different topics and a really interesting one for you to explore and think about in terms of how language is used in reality to represent different people um, and, and who they are and where they're from. We also look at language change and that means um, looking at how language has changed and evolved and developed over time and what the influential factors are there, whether it's invasions or in inventions um, and and you know travel and and different things like that all change in how we use language um, and how language is quite a living a living thing that changes as its as its speakers use it differently. Um, we also explore the attitudes towards that change. So some people might feel that any sort of change to language is a corruption of it and that it deteriorates and means that it's um, it's not as prestigious as it perhaps once was. Whereas others see language as being something that evolves and changes. Um, so again, that's a really interesting topic that you'll get to explore um, ideas about and express your own ideas about. And I think that's one of the beauties of this course is that it's one way you get to really think about language and how um, how you see it and, and how you use it and be able to express your ideas about that. The non-exam assessment has got two components. The first one is the language investigation, and this is where you get to carry out your own linguistic study. So you get to collect data. So you might do some transcription where you go and make some recordings and then you will test out theories um, and maybe support them or even challenge them with the language that you explore. Um, and again, there's, there's a huge amount of freedom there in terms of the choice of topic. You, we've had people compare the language of um, presidential candidates in um, the election debates. We've had people um, look at the language in a Disney film and whether or not it conforms to or challenges gender expectations. Um, we've had people look at the power dynamics between um, characters maybe in a film or in a television programme um, or they've collected the data themselves in a recording. So really interesting and, and wide ranging in terms of the scope there for you to explore what interests you. 
The second component is original writing. And so I hope you're getting the impression that this course has got a lot of different facets to it, lots of different elements. It's very analytical. It's very technical as well. Um, it's it's very much, much um, about language in society. So you get that, that sociological aspect of it as well, how we learn language and how language develops. So there's a, um, a psychological aspect to it as well. And then there's this creative element where you get to do some, some writing yourself. So you get to choose whether it's fiction or non-fiction that you do. You explore what we would refer to as style samples. So where you find examples of pieces of writing that um, you want to model your writing on and use as a bit of inspiration. But you deconstruct those to see how they work. And then you use those conventions, very much using that style sample as a springboard for your own piece. And then you do um, a commentary to explain your choices and almost deconstruct your own work. So it's a really varied course in that sense with with a lot a lot to offer you and a lot to interest you in terms of um what you are assessed on the a level english language has got five assessment objectives um, and these represent the different skills that you will develop throughout the two-year course now the first one is represented by the little box at the top because that's the idea that you'll build up a toolkit and that toolkit is will allow you to do to um, apply what we call the methods of language analysis. So you'll learn a, a huge range of terminology here um, to be able to analyze language. So you, we've referred to these as language levels. So where you'll look at things like um, lexis and semantics, so words and meanings, phonetics and phonology, so sound, grammatical structures, graphology, uh, pragmatics, lots of different um, aspects of language to be able to apply then to any text that you encounter. So that's your toolkit for, for AO1. AO2, the light bulb there represents ideas because AO2 is where you get to explore concepts and issues. And this is a bit of the course that people really enjoy because it's about debating issues and ideas and having opinions and, and looking at what other people's opinions are. And it's developing that critical understanding of those concepts and issues and being able to apply them to language. AO3 is evaluating the contextual factors and how the language that's being used is um, affected by the context that it's used in um, and, and how that affects the meaning that's constructed. Now, the reason why the, the man up at the top right there represents the AO3 is because we use a little acronym GRAMPS to um, represent context. So that stands for genre, register, audience, mode, purpose and subject. And it's just another way that we um, apply that to texts. AO4 is represented by the forked arrow at the bottom, and that's where we look at, at comparing and looking at the connections between texts, um, identifying links between them. And then finally, AO5, represented by the pen there, is about your creativity. So your ability to deploy the language that you've been studying um, in your own writing. So that's um, demonstrated in both an exam context where you have to do writing in, in an exam situation, but also as part of your NEA where you get to do that original writing piece, selecting your own genre and purpose. One of the really important things you get from this video is a sense of what our lessons would be like. So what that experience of studying English language A level at college school would be like for the next two years and what an enjoyable experience that would be. So to give you a little insight into that, um, just going to look at um, probably quite a new topic to you. Um, so um, one of the language levels that we study is phonetics, phonology and prosodics when we're analysing um, language. So that's the area of study relating to sound, looking at how sounds are produced and also exploring how speakers shape meaning through the use of sound. So, for example, their intonation, their speed, the volume, the stress that they place on their language. So because we're dealing with phonetics, we're dealing with sound, we're dealing with spoken language rather than written language. So we'll look at why, for example, we need a different way of, re of recording sound um, because the written alphabet doesn't do sound justice. It's not it's not made for that. Um, so we'll look at, for example, the, the alphabet that you can see on the screen there, the graphemes. Um, if you think about, for example, the letter C and that how that sounds very different in the word cat and the word France. They both contain the C grapheme, but phonetically they are very different. So for that, we need a different alphabet. And the alphabet that we have there is the International Phonetic Alphabet. Um, 
The international aspect means that it works across all languages. It's phonetic, which means it's based on sound, so it can represent variety um, across language, but also within language. So different accents would be represented differently if you were transcribing something phonetically. And then um, you get that one to one correspondence between every sound and every symbol. So phoneme and grapheme, whereas as we just saw with the um, with the written alphabet, we don't get that. Um, just as we saw with the, the letter C, for example, the grapheme C in the word cat and the word France, there's not that one to one correspondence. Um, graphemes can be represented very differently by different sounds. So here is um, the International Phonetic Alphabet, some of the sounds there, um, the symbols and then examples of, of um, words with, that feature those sounds. So as I said earlier, it's quite a technical course and there is a lot of um, knowledge in terms of language levels and this terminology, this framework for exploring language. Um, here's an example of a type of activity that we might do to um, practice becoming familiar with that. So there's some phonetic utterances on the screen there um, and we would just match them to the picture just to um, get used to dealing with that phonetic alphabet and recognising what it says. So you've got, for example, the I'll be back in the middle linking to the Terminator, banana to the minions. Um, is that your final answer for who wants to be a millionaire, for example? Um, we also study the technical aspects of how, how phonetics are produced, how the different sounds are produced. So we would look at, for example, the, the place of articulation, where it's where different sounds are made as well as the manner of articulation, how they're made, how the air actually travels through the vocal tract in order to create those different sounds. So that would build up our AO1 terminology so that we've got that technical language to be able to identify phonological features. But that isn't enough. It's not just about spotting things. It's about then considering and analysing and evaluating how those language features construct meaning in different contexts. So, for example, in the context of um, this text, which is Huffer and Cuffer, um, a children's um, kind of nonsense poem, really, about two giants having a fight. Um, and we would explore how the phonological choices that the, the writer has made have been used to create the meanings and representations. So how the giants are represented, how their actions are represented. Um, so we would practice deploying that technical vocabulary, labelling the different features, um, but then considering how they create those meanings and representations. So there you go, a little example there of how um, we might analyse that, um, the title of that poem, Huffer and Cuffer, um, exploring the phonological choices. Because it's such a vast course with lots of different topics and, and issues um, and skills, the, the range of assessments um, matches that too. So it's it's um, there are lots of different skills that are tested and lots of different opportunities for you to, to ex explore and express um, your knowledge and experience of the course. So, for example, um, here's an example of an exam question where they've taken two pieces of text. So you've got um, a, a forum on Mumsnet and then um, an article from a newspaper and you've been asked to explore how they create meanings and representations, looking at them separately, but then also comparing. You also get to analyse child language, um, I mentioned earlier, so there's um, opportunities to explore transcripts of children's early speech and also of their early literacy and exploring the concepts and, and issues around um, child language acquisition. Um, when you're looking at the topics relating to diversity and change, you get to um, evaluate and analyse ideas so, for example, evaluating the idea that a person's language is determined by the social groups that they belong to or evaluating the idea that language change can be controlled, directed. So that opportunity to um, analyse and, and debate ideas. Um, you also get the opportunity to explore texts about language. So this one's about women's language um, in particular and you explore how those two texts express the different viewpoints. Um, you then get to do a piece of writing of your own, exploring the same issues. So lots of opportunities to express those different skills, and explore those different skills. We have a lot of support material available, so you'll be familiar with, with Firefly. So there's lots of materials on there to help you with each aspect of the course. And as a, as a, a kind of stepping stone, there are a huge number of careers that English language can lead you to. 
and so I hope you've seen it's a really valuable course.